want to refer to Beverwick, you send them to Sarah and she'll give them the information and then she'll assign them to either myself, Linda Godoy, or Lori Belcourt. Lori and I are the senior living specialists and I've, we've both worked with many of you who are in the room now. Um, so you are probably more familiar with us than you are with Sarah, but she's the person who assigns the leads to either Lori or myself. And what I wanted to talk to you about was um, now that we're starting to open up the campus a little bit more and giving the opportunity to new leads coming in who are looking at Beverwick, the opportunity to see a furnished apartment or a furnished cottage, we can now call you if you're one of the, the many who are willing to let us show your apartment or cottage. So some of you have already been called by me and um, we will bring people in. We, we try to give at least a 24 hour notice, if not longer. And if on the day that you've decided to let us show your apartment or cottage, you're not feeling up to it, you can always call us and say, let's, let's schedule another time. And, and that's fine. But if you are willing to let us show your cottage or apartment, please let us know. Because it looks so much better when it's furnished than when you show an empty apartment, especially if that empty apartment is filled with paint cans and rolls of carpet and other things that we're using to do the refurbishment in, in the building. It really turns a person off, as I'm sure you can imagine. So we thank you for that in advance. And Lori wants to give you an update on our numbers. <laughs> yes, you do, Lori. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm Lori Belcourt. I think most of you know me, but I've been here for 12 years, and I was the marketing assistant, but I've been in this position since 2020, December, I think it was, um, right before that fun time of COVID. So for independent living, our actual occupancy percent is 95.5%, and at the terrace, it's 95.1%, and at the nursing home, we're 100% full, to the best of my knowledge, right? Um, so we're doing well. We have two move-ins planned for September, and then three for October in independent living and we have two move-ins this month planned for the terrace so that's where we are um, i'm just going to mention that we are going to start a resident referral program and <clears throat> it's contingent upon corporate marketing getting the materials back to us when everything's finalized but that's an opportunity for you to refer people neighbors friends um, someone who's age appropriate for Beverwick, who you think would enjoy living here because um, we get our best referrals from our residents and no one sells Beverwick any better than a resident. So please send us your people and we'll roll that out very soon, probably within the next month or two. Okay. Any, any questions? Yes. Maxine. I would like to introduce Kathy Hodges, who has just moved in. And we have Barbara. Where are Barbara? She's in the back. Hi, Barbara. She's flying under the radar. <laughs> she doesn't want to be called on, so she sat in the back row. <laughs> yes. What would you consider age appropriate, and how fit does the person have to be? That's a good question. Um, the Fair Housing Act has changed our original age limit from 65 to 55. So anyone who's 55 years of age or older, but if someone is married to a person who is 45 years old, but they're 55 and they want to move to Beverwick, which is unlikely, uh, <laughs> they, they can qualify to get in. As far as um, physical and cognitive abilities, what we do is we look at a walker or a cane as an aid to independence. So we don't rule somebody out because they use durable medical equipment. If they can safely navigate the building and get from the apartment that they want to move into 
to the dining room, to the front door, to any of the places that they want to go to on a routine basis, then they certainly are independent in, in our eyes. And we can't discriminate against them just because they use durable medical equipment. Um, there are also people who we tour who may come with a walker or a cane and they be, may be going through rehab at that time who anticipate getting better and they want to move to Beverwick because they know we have physical and occupational therapy as well as some great exercise classes here. So that's a draw for them. As far as cognition is concerned, we want somebody to be able to function on their own without assistance from a spouse. So if if we have a couple and the, the husband or the wife is supported by that other spouse and they could not live independently on their own, we have to say to them, I'm sorry, but this isn't the right option for you unless you'd like to live an independent living and your spouse would be better suited in the at the terrace or in memory care or in our nursing home. That's what we have to say. Given that, I can tell you that moving at the age of 70, 80, or even older for a person who's been living in their own home for many years is a huge, huge shock to the system. And when they move at an older age, it's very difficult for them to pick up the speed when they first become a resident. That's why it's so important to have our resident greeter program, which Maxine Matiski runs so beautifully. Um, but there are cases where that doesn't happen. People will come in for a tour and they are fine, and then they move in and they crash and burn, and you all know that. And then our social worker, Sue Lover, works very diligent with them and with their family to find a better level of care where they can enjoy their life and, and be safe. That's our concern, they've got to be safe here. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, where is the memory unit? We don't have memory care on our campus. We have two in the system. One is in Cohoes, it's called Marjorie Doyle Rockwell Center. The other is in East Greenbush, and it's called Eddie Alzheimer's Center. Glenn Highland Meadows. Uh, oh, oh, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> Glenn Highland Meadows just opened a, a memory care facility in their um, Queensbury location. I always, I always dismiss them because they're so far away. But they, they have the memory care now, they have assisted living with an enhanced license, and they have independent living. Beverwick is still the largest community overall of any of the Yeti. I better not tell you that because it may be on trivia next week. <laughs> any other questions? No? Okay, I'll turn it back to Paula. Thank you very much. And remember, Thank you. If you're going to be willing to let us show your apartment or cottage, contact Sarah, Lori, or me. Thank you. And uh, on the same, um, having to do with marketing on the same note, so we would, we had a discussion this morning. So as we're loosening up all of our COVID restrictions, pretty much we don't really have any COVID restrictions at this point. Our restrictions in the dining room are more related to space and renovation, not COVID. Um, but we've, we've also been talking about the Patroon Club. So many of you, when you were on the waiting list here, were part of the Patroon Club. Um, they can come for dining, they can come for activities, things like that. So right now with the Patroon Club, we're still restricting dining because of the same space issues, not because of COVID related issues, but the same space issues. And we wanna make sure that there's room for all of you before we're inviting any guest or um, Patroon Club members. But we did talk about opening up um, our activities to the Patroon Club. So they're welcome to come in for social events. Um, so what that means too is when we plan trips, because Patroon Club members um, are invited you know, to sign up with trips, all activities, they receive the bulletin. Um, so they're aware of what's happening. Um, but each trip, when we have a bus, there is an RSVP deadline for residents to sign up. Please pay attention to that RSVP deadline because if somebody hasn't signed up and we have spaces available, then we can open it up to the Patroon Club members. Um, so I just wanted to make everybody aware of that because um, we haven't had it for two years. So we're gonna move forward with um, offering them more. Any questions on that? Yes. 
I assume you're just going to let them know that information. The Patroon Club? Yes. Yes, so that's what we were talking about this morning because we're drafting a letter to send out to the Patroon Club members just to provide updates because we haven't um, in a while, so. Did that go into effect immediately? We actually really didn't just, the what? We were thinking of maybe doing it with the new bulletin. Uh, so with the new bulletin. Any other questions on that? All right, and activities, we're kind of rolling right into the next topic. Uh, so we have our 30th anniversary celebrations next week, and I just want Ashley to just give a quick update. Um, I know we've been putting out the uh, information regarding that. And just as a reminder, I know um, for the 20th anniversary, we kind of did a week-long celebration. The 25th, we did one big party one night. Um, but as we were planning this week, uh, you know, it's a little bit toned down because of the renovations and because of dining and the limitations we have in dining. However, Ashley's done a wonderful job, I think, planning um, for a fun week ahead. So I'll let her update you on that. All right, everybody. Sorry, I came packing water bottles. But so for the 30th anniversary, starting next Monday, uh, well, this coming Monday, we're going to have Beverly Trivia in here um, at 2 o'clock. There will be, I will be your host, um, but there will be staff and uh, resident participation. Uh, every day we'll have an assignment for, not an assignment, but have a dress code, I would say, or a dress guideline. So for that Monday, um, everybody will be wearing green for Beverwick. Tuesday, we have our car show in the West parking lot. So I did give everybody in the West uh, a notice about parking limitations for Tuesday. Uh, best practice, I would say, just have your car maybe moved by Monday night because Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. is when we're going to be shutting down that parking lot to, to move the cars in. Uh, we will have a band, uh, root beer floats, and it's 1950s, so come dressed, we were saying, what, poodle skirts and uh, whatever you have. Yeah. <laughs> For Wednesday, uh, we have our diamonds in, or denim and diamonds Brooks barbecue here. So we will have a tent that you see is being put up at the bottom part of the patio. We have the tent up here, and then we will have some space um, in the Van Cortlandt room for anybody who might not want to be outside or rain any expected rain. However, next week is looking beautiful all all five days. So fingers crossed. Yeah, knock on wood. Um, so that's Wednesday. Of course, denim and diamonds is uh, <laughs> denim and diamonds kind of speaks for itself as far as the dress uh, guidelines. Tuesday, we will have a casino night. Thursday. Thursday. I'm going backwards. Thursday, we will have a casino night in here. It starts at six o'clock, but it goes until 930. So there's plenty of time. Um, to come in, it's more 1930s, 1920s theme. So uh, we have all of the, we will have uh, poker, blackjack, and roulette in here. For every chip that you receive, that you win, the chips do have to be turned in, but when you turn them in, you'll get a raffle ticket, and there will be three baskets uh, that we will raffle off. Friday is the Jazz, Beverwick Blues Jazz Club. So. We have a music quartet coming. The music cats will be here uh, out on the patio from four to five for a wine and cheese, which we will also be uh, featuring the Saratoga Sunrise because that weekend it will be Travers, so we're kind of mixing it all together. Um, and those guidelines, very jazz, blue, but that evening after dinner at 7.30, the Beverwick Story Hour will be in here uh, where there will be a short uh, video about the history of Beverwick. So, any questions? Yes. Then more about the Brooks Barbecue. Is that at noon? Is that in the evening? Is, yep. is the restaurant going to be open? Or so it's at noon, from noon to 1.30, and it, it will be out back. Uh, you do not have to run down, and we will have runners to bring the food up, and we'll have a kind of a buffet style on the table. Um, but it will be a chicken lunch. <clears throat> Will there be a dinner that night? 
that evening, no, uh, that we would be having a lunch. But there is, there's still dinner, dining, the dining room's open, but there's no special event dinner that evening. All right, well, I hope to see everybody there next week um, at all of the costumes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ashley. Um, I just wanted to take a quick moment, as we have been, just to recognize um, since the last meeting all of the positive comments we've received for our staff. Um, and I'll quickly just name in maintenance. We had Rigo, Jamie, Frank, and Dave Beck. They were all recognized for their efforts in their department. And transportation, we have Jerry. Security, Michael Pagan, Dwayne, and Mikey Vola. Uh, for dining, Ash, uh, Alicia, Matt, Colton, Kendra, Len, and Buddy. They were all um, recognized separately on a comment card. Housekeeping, we had Dorothy, Afeta, Ramon, and Jose. And for admin, we had Kathy and Kaylee. So um, thank you, keep the positive comments flowing. And they each receive um, a meal a free meal in the in the cafe for for lunch so <clears throat> thank you we appreciate it and uh, so also I just wanted to take the opportunity so we like I said with those comments we, we take the positives and that's how we recognize our staff um, the negative comments we also do review monthly in our leadership in our different meetings um, so some of the themes that we saw this month, I just wanted to take the opportunity to address so um, you know that we're looking at them. Temperature in this room. <laughs> several, several. Um, and it does seem a little bit inconsistent throughout the building. And you can literally walk in one hallway and feel very freezing and then the next you want to you know, strip down. So um, <laughs> for the, we did talk about our, our system and it is really controlled on, on one laptop down in the basement which we did talk about getting some universal access to it but also upgrading to where it's a web-based system i know even where i worked eight years ago the maintenance director could control it with his phone at home you know so it should be a web-based system where we can upgrade that and be able to control it. it it shouldn't be locked in an office after a certain hour so um we are looking to just have some better controls with that and also have the ability to program a little bit better. Guest suite A, we got a few negative comments about that, um, primarily about the mattresses in there. So we are looking to get two mattresses in there, but we're gonna switch from, right now it's a double or full size bed. We're gonna switch to two singles. So we've had two single beds in there. We got rid of them and then did a double bed, but, the, um, but we did hear some complaints about the two singles. So. If, for example, you know, siblings visit at the same time and, and having, those, having those single beds for relatives visiting, sharing that room was convenient. We're also redoing the bathroom in guest suite A, correct? Yes, the bathroom. And then um, including the cost for the trips in the bulletin came up. Um, so that we're, we're addressing in the future, right? In the next bulletin. Yes. Okay. And that was it for the comment cards. Um, renovation updates, uh, it's moving along. <laughs> As you can see, we now have uh, different walls, so, so we're moving forward. We had our meeting today. So with the furniture, as I think some of you are aware, maybe you're not, but we do employee auctions. If there's furniture that's left behind, we do, um, you know, employees can bid on it, you know, and sometimes people can get, you know, a new couch for $5 things like that so um, all of the furniture that uh, we're not reusing we put up for an employee auction so they can bid on that um, the new furniture they're ordering so it's about 8 to 12 weeks before that's going to be in um, which was about when the renovations are going to end so that's always been the plan that the furniture was going to come in last um, so with that um, we have done the employee auction employees have bid on certain items so you're gonna to start to see the furniture dwindle throughout the building, um, so that will go. <laughs> furniture that nobody wanted to bid on, we are gonna to donate to Habitat for Humanity. However, they now approve it first, so we need to send them pictures. Um, 
And then we also had other communities, for example, Beechwood came over, they're gonna be taking some furniture. Um, and I think one of our other nursing homes came and they're gonna take some, some of the furniture as well. So uh, it'll be a process, but as I just wanted you to be aware if you start seeing some furniture disappearing, that's why. <laughs> yes? I know the library is being renovated now, and, and somebody asked me if there's still going to be windows into that room. <clears throat> yeah, I believe the door is gonna be, the doors leading into it will still have the, so will be clear. There were windows around it. What do you mean there? I'm not sure I'm understanding. The library always, you can see Crossroads. the library as you walk around. Oh. Is that going to be the same? Yeah, there's, I think there's going to be where the door, like kind of where you walked into the cafe now where you have this windows, it was, I believe that's going to be clear I'm to see it. the library where it, which is going to be there's no the cafe. Full wall of windows. Internal or external. The coffee house. Yes. Right. So where the current cafe was, there was windows there. Yeah. Yes, so I believe it's going to be the same windows. It's not going to be the same windows, but there's still going to be some sort of clear windows in the front of that area. Yeah, if that makes, did that answer your question? Except you said the cafe, I'm talking about where the library is. Right, so current cafe where the library is going to be. No, no, I'm not explaining this right at all. <laughs> where the library is going to be now, where their cafe used to be is going to have, yes, some clear windows in the front of it. But where the library is now, is that going, going to, to be still be Oh, oh, I see. It's going to be more open. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I completely was not following you. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said the burger chair was going to be leaving. I hope there will be always one chair in each space, each of those open areas, because I see people who walk down to get their dinners and lunches. And they can't make it all the way back. They yep. halfway. So the comment was if um, there's at least one uh, chair in each sitting area, so if people need to take a rest, they have that ability. So yes, so we're taking that into consideration before we're completely clearing it out, that there has to be something there that people need it. Anything else? Yes? Do I hear say the word? The shelves? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I saw them. They're coming. That's what I got today. <laughs> I saw them. All. I'm sorry. I saw no, the shelves are here. Yeah. I mean, the shelves have been here. Yes. Yeah. No, they've been here. I, they're waiting on some frame piece for it. So uh, it's tr every opportunity we have, we ask about those shelves. They are coming. I promise. <laughs> they didn't have any update as far as the date. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. When the, when the furniture goes, is there going to be no furniture for a while? Because we have a lot of activities in the lounge area. The lounge area is not changing, so the furniture is not being replaced. Okay. Not, no. I don't mean out here. I mean the, the south lounge. The south lounge, the west oh. lounge. The south lounge. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> The South Lounge, uh, we can look at that. what furniture was there and what's supposed to be going, but we can make sure that there's furniture there, yeah. Okay, the West Lounge, too. We, we're okay. Okay. The same area right yep. by the West Entrance. I think she's yes. The fur so you're saying the furniture by the bar area is not being... It's not being changed out. <laughs> so the tables are somewhat rickety. Those are going to stay? The tables in the lounge, in the current lounge, not the bar. Not in the bar area where the tables are. Yeah. Yes, where the bar area where the tables are, they are staying. They are pretty pretty new. Yeah. They're rickety. They're rickety. They're rickety. They're rickety? Yes, they're really rickety. Like, they sh like we were like, oh good, they're replacing them. And now you're saying you're not. We are not replacing them. Put some pads on them. We could certainly look at those tables if there's an issue, but we are not replacing them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Use the table to stand up. Yeah. For those of us walkers. Okay. And they're pretty regular. Okay. But there is no current plan to replace them at the moment. I'm saying okay. that's, that's just All right. You'll find this on they the floor. They have been replaced recently. Yeah. Well, they weren't replaced with good ones okay. though, because yes. they don't work. <laughs> I was just going to suggest, is it possible the ricketiness, quote unquote, can be fixed by leveling the table legs? Yes. Uh, we'll look and see what the issue is, yeah. yeah. Yep. 
Okay, um, so last, last month we talked about uh, the potential to switch to a brunch on Sundays. So a couple things I wanted to bring up about that was um, the reason that a brunch was proposed was talking with Matt, doing the um, dining room renovations. It was, uh, it was noted Sunday evening is usually the lowest attended meal. So it was an idea of how we can, what can we do different on Sundays? This was an idea um, that he thought might work. Um, he's seen it done at other places and said, oh, maybe, maybe this is something that the residents would like. Um, we have heard comments um, to the opposition of that, that, that it doesn't seem to be, I haven't heard a positive comment. I've got a lot of negative comments around it. Um, our original plan was November 1st. However, we couldn't, we wouldn't with November 1st. Uh, if, if we were to try it, um, it would be January 1st. Um, but, however, the, the idea was it would be a trial period. Um, if we didn't like it, we could go back. Again, the only motivation was trying to shake things up, see if somebody wanted to do something different. If we don't want to do something different, we don't have to do anything different. Um, so what we're actually going to do as we get closer to that date, we will put out a survey to the residents. So I'll ask you guys to fill that out and then we'll see, you know, do the majority of the people want this? And if they do, we'll trial it. Um, to go food would always be available. So if somebody wanted a meal on that evening, they could always get something, um, but it wouldn't be a service in the dining room. It's not that there wouldn't be anything available. So, but with that being said, as we get closer to the time where we can even execute it, we will put out a survey. Okay? Yes? Two things. One is the small number of people using the dining room is a function of summertime. I think so, yeah. People are the Adirondacks, they're traveling, they're doing all this. That's why the dining room has so few people. All those people are going to come back <laughs> in January. I don't think, and, and again, I didn't, I didn't ask what the time frame for his comparison was. I don't think it was looking at last month or the month previous. I think it's just looking historically that is the lowest attended meal, not just a, a, a finite one month period. It was the lowest attended. No, I think it's seasonal. And that's one of the things that I think is mm -hmm. makes it really a not good idea. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I went back and got out my brochure that I got when I moved mm -hmm. here. And it says in print, daily dinner in our magnificent dining room. <laughs> <laughs> I expect I'm serious. I expect mm -hmm. that. I signed something. I don't know if it's I don't imagine you violated anything legally, mm -hmm. but you certainly have this is not the spirit I signed up for. It said dining in our lovely dining room every night, and that's what I expect. Okay. Okay, and if that's something that, I mean, if it's not something that's wanted, that it's not something we have to move forward with at this point. But again, like we said, we will survey and see what the majority want. Yes? Well, the other thing with the renovations that I think it's going to be a minus no one is that there's only going to be one place to have dinner. I don't get one mm -hmm. dining room. Whereas before the pandemic, there were two, and a lot of us took advantage maybe once a week of a more informal dinner. Mm -hmm. But I take it that with the bistro, there's only going to be dinner in the dining room. That's it. No. So the question is about, you know, prior to the renovations, there was two places to have dinner, the cafe and the dining room. So we, there is gonna have a more casual menu. So that was always the intent that the casual dining will be served in the south portion of the dining room. Not at lunchtime. No, at dinner as well. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's so, right. but that's something that we have to work out. We haven't got to the point where what, what the menu, what the casual menu would look like. Would it be available to the entire dining room? Will it be? But um, the idea was that that bistro area, yes, was going to be serviced for lunch, but also for casual dining in so the we, evening. We, we were told only one that, but no bistro. Yep. So, but I, I don't have any menu plans, but that's really the next phase that we will go through. Yes? And you need to be sure Buddy knows that. I was going to say that's the last good forum, he very clearly says yes. the yes. same menu would be served in both areas. 
Okay. So he, he, if he, he needed to have a conversation. Yep, and then when actually the, the renovations were started, Buddy wasn't in the role yes. that he's in. Yes. So, and that's important too, because Matt wasn't in the role he was in either when this started. So I know that's a conversation I've had with Matt, and I know that was the conversation when we initially planned it, but we haven't gotten to the point where we're actually planning out menus, but I will, I will make sure that <laughs> we have that meeting with the dining team. said at the last food forum. Right. So I, I, I will talk with the dining team. Yep. And that's where I'm going to. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Will there be separate dress codes? I, I don't know. That's something we have to figure out. The question was, will there be separate dress codes? Yeah. Can that go on the, on the question here? Yeah. About? Whether we want a separate dress code. <laughs> I guess we could. Yeah. Yes. Will the bistro area be separate from the more formal dining area? So it's not going to be separated like it is with distance with the cafe currently, but it is separated. It has it will have an entrance um, in that aspect that it would be you're not going through the dining room to get to the south dining room as you currently need to. Oh, joke time? No, we got more. <laughs> I'm ready for the joke, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other questions on brunch, renovations? Dress code, we will work out. Yep, we'll put all of that out there. Um, one thing I did want to bring up, kind of in general, it's um, I've gotten some questions about a specific incident, but I just want to talk about this in general. So flippers, um, flipper on resident apartments. Um, our, our current process is that we have a log with every apartment. So on 11 to 7, the security aide who works on that shift at some point, usually probably around midnight or so, goes around the building and puts the flippers up on all your apartments. Um, when they do that, they mark in the log, they have a slash. They put on each apartment, they put the flipper up. In the morning, they go around, starting at around 10 a.m., um, or around that time, depending on what's going on. Uh, they will go through and check the flippers. If the flipper is down, they put another slash. So then there's an X for every single apartment for that flipper period. As a redundancy, we built in on 3 to 11 shift when they come in, that they're to be making rounds some point at the beginning of their shift, just as a redundancy to see if there's a flipper that hasn't moved in case the day staff has missed somebody. They missed an apartment, so they're again just looking for those flippers to make sure that they're all down. Um, <clears throat> if we have any belief that a flipper check hasn't been done, or if we have an incident that happens, usually if we have an incident, we find somebody that's in the apartment, the first thing we always do is check those flipper logs. Um, but if we have an incident that's occurred that we you know, believe that it hasn't happened as per our policy, we're gonna investigate that. We're gonna interview each security guard. Um, recently, we've taken the opportunity to meet with each security guard, go over the flipper checks, talk about why it's important that it is the most important role that they have on that shift, um, on each of their shifts, and um, to just go over the importance of that, among many other things in that meeting. But um, so that, I just wanted to bring that up. I know there's been a lot of discussion about that. Yes? Since our door was painted, the flipper doesn't come down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, unless somebody's fixed it in the last couple of days, mm -hmm. okay, I haven't checked it for a while. Yeah. It was getting stuck up there. That's a good point. So we've been painting all the doors, and if you notice anything with your flipper, please let us know because we can always adjust those with this group. Mm -hmm. And they should be noting that too. Yeah, they should be noting that too if it's not coming down. So. Yes. This is not the most pleasant conversation to have, but we know that there's been an unpleasant and unfortunate incident mm -hmm. regarding security and flippers. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that you and the administration have taken this very seriously mm -hmm. because it affects every one of us and especially those of us who are alone in mm -hmm. our apartments and our cottages. So can you address that and reassure us 
about the security situation. Somebody's not checking. Mm -hmm. Somebody hasn't checked. Mm -hmm. So I guess what the, the question is, um, so unfortunate incidents, like I said, if we have an incident that comes up or, and we have reason to believe it hasn't been done on a ship um, or evidence to suggest that, then yes, we do. We will address it with that specific individual as well as, like I said, taking the opportunity to, to meet with them and tell them, question an individual who was supposed to do their job on that ship and make sure that they did it. Um, but also looking to audit to see if we think it's a weekend issue, coming in and checking, somebody doing some rounds around eight o'clock, and if all the flippers are down at 8 a.m., well then somebody didn't put them up the night before. Mm -hmm. So we've added that little additional piece is to be checking and auditing on a um, periodic basis to make sure it's been done. May I say, I often do not bring my newspaper in until 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happens with the flipper, mm -hmm. but that would indicate I haven't opened my door. Nobody's ever knocked on the door. Okay. Well, they should have if your flipper was up. So there's some security. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be 11 o'clock before they get there. If they don't start till 10, 1030, it is possible. That's the other piece we did talk about security is, is starting that. Um, at that time, if they, if they, but 11 o'clock, it, it does take them time to get through. Um, so th that's a possibility, but um, you know, it's something that we'll continue to educate the security team on and check on them, make sure they're doing it. Is, is there more than one person that has security around each night? <laughs> no, because the question was, is there more than one person doing security rounds? No, because there's one security guard. Yeah. It'll take time to do the whole building then. Yes. <coughs> yes. Uh, we talked in residence council with you too. Are the, and it, it seemed to be a problem more on weekends than during the week. Yeah. And are these people being trained? Because we had talked about that. The question is, it seemed to be a problem um, on weekends and are they being trained? They are. And we've actually stopped using agency security, so we haven't had agency security in here in quite some time. Um, so when we're investigating, and um, you know, when I was looking at nights recently for a recent incident, I mean, it's it's employee long-term employees who have been here uh, a long time that certainly know the role and their responsibilities. But there there is not a security guard who should not know what a flipper check is. Um, they should absolutely 100% know that. And then we also have a binder that's there. So we're not, like I said, we're not using agency, but should something happen for some reason that somebody hasn't been here, there is a quick orientation reference guide that they have. Yes? Um, I've had a situation twice on the weekends where you go to speak to security and it's the same person and his comment is, oh, well, I don't have any reference here what my job is and that's not my job. Okay. So there is a binder there is my point. That's a problem and I can talk to you about that and who that is. So um, her comment was that um, when she's brought it up to security, I don't know what my job is and wasn't she's trained. She's telling us there's a binder there that tells him what his job is. Yeah. So yep. she's ignoring that. Yes. Yeah. As long as we're talking about security. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, Gloria asked if she could come make a comment. Thank you. Is better? Yeah. yeah. The Beverly community is a unique group of people. We are an older gathering of independent livers. We could get around by ourselves. Sometimes we need a cane, walking sticks, walkers, rollator, motorized scooters, ramps instead of stairs, but we can get most places on our own. 
We are older, and it takes a lot to get into Beverwick. We sell our big houses, filled with memories and collections of treasured times. We have legacies and accumulations, but we are vulnerable. There are people that will take advantage of our situation. We need protection. There is a facade of protection here at Beverwick. There is a conspicuously placed security office placed overseeing the entrance lobby. There is often uniformed security personnel at the desk. Some of the security personnel are tall, large men. They sit beside the desk, behind the desk on comfortable, height adjustable chairs. They are, there are security cameras placed high up on the walls or the ceilings of the main entrances to Beverly. There are two large monitors sit front and center on the front lobby desk, security desk overreaching the height of the counter. Security personnel adjust their chair seat low enough that they cannot be seen by people in the lobby or see people in the lobby. I have observed the face of the monitoring screens many times, both when security personnel are... My throat is killing me. <coughs> <laughs> when they are not at the desk and when they are. I have never seen monitors showing the cameras of views. If cameras were being monitored from the angle they are positioned now, high on the walls and ceilings, only the tops of heads, and maybe an oblique side view is visible identification of an individual from this angle would be problematic at best. I have observed the face of the monitoring screens intentionally many times, both when their security personnel are at the desk and when security personnel are at other places on campus. I've never seen the monitors showing a camera very views. <coughs> Excuse me. Besides uniformed security personnel being on duty 24-7, well, almost all the exterior doors are locked. Each resident has their own keys, one for the general entrance doors and into Beverwick, and one for their own individual apartment. I'm sorry about my voice. <coughs> Employees of Beverwick also have specific keys as directed by their employment position. Anyone else besides residents and employees are not given keys to this facility. All others, independent contractors, guests, delivery people, etc., are only allowed into Beverwick by express permission of staff or residents. So, Beverwick is locked and guarded 24-7, except if there was someone, anyone, that wants to prop open a locked door at any time, day or night, weekday or weekend, for any length of time, with no compensatory security outfit offset, then propping locked doors open is approved. Right. Administration clearly, consistently, and loudly proclaim this exception to all, anytime, for any reason. When I went to lunch today, the outside door to the south entrance was propped wide open. I went back to my apartment, I got my phone, I took a picture. It's wide open, there's nobody there. I went to lunch. I came back. The door wasn't propped wide open, 
but it was propped open. Exactly. After how long does it take lunch? An hour, an hour and a half? It's still wide open. <clears throat> when these when the locked doors are propped wide open for hours, as I have observed on several occasions, <clears throat> there is no security in sight. Cameras are not being monitored. No employee, let alone security personnel, are screening people coming through the doors. Weather, temperature, time of day, day of week, any time is an okay time to ignore our security concerns. Too bad for those old comfortable folks. That's just my opinion. Thanks, I'd Gloria. Like to say something. Yep. Friday night, I went out to dinner. I came back at nine o'clock. The security guy wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But there's a sign right by the door that says "Press zero zero to open the door." So, what kind of security is that? At nine o'clock no, at night. It doesn't it doesn't open. Open. No, it, it does pop open. You press zero zero, the door popped yeah, right open. It says so. You press zero zero zero, you'll get another That's security. No, it, when you no, press. The door Yes, no, you go to security and security has to release it. There was no security there. That's what I'm yes. telling you. No, they release it on their cell phone, whether they're sitting there or not. It's on their cell phone. I do it every night. Yeah, it's going to their cell phone when you dial that number. It's good that you tell us that because I was like, no. oh, this is really great. No, it's going to security's cell phone when you do that. However, he with... But he doesn't know who's asking to come in. Do you want a copy of that? I could have been anybody. I could have been two guys in a hoodie. Mm -hmm. Kathy, saying, you want a copy of that? Pressing zero zero on the thing, and then he would still let me in. Yeah. Putting that out there. So it is, yeah, it is going to security where there should be who's coming in. They do, they can say that, yes. But okay. It is, it but it's not zero zero that's opening the door. It's going to the, I understand what you're saying, which I can address. So to get back to this memo, um, I just wanted to, to say, Gloria, I appreciate you bringing it up. Um, with security and doors being propped open, we have, obviously with renovations going on, we have a lot of people coming in and out of this building. If they're bringing in um, carpeting, if they're bringing in certain things, yes, they are propping those doors open. However, that doesn't mean that the doors should be left open all day long. They should not be propped open all day long. And I've, I've brought that up with the construction managers and I can bring it up again. Another issue that we have is when people move in. We do allow people when they move in to prop open the doors as they're moving in their things. Um, so that we will continue to allow. Um, but nobody checks the door later because long after they're gone, the door is still propped open. And it shouldn't be, and that's something I can tell security on their rounds that they should be looking for, that there should be nothing in those doors. Um, I know, you know, specifically the last two incidents that, you know, Gloria had concerns about was when people were moving in. And yes, they do have our consent to prop the doors open in those instances. And then they should be done. They should be gone. They should not be propped open anymore once the move is complete. Okay. Yeah. So they shouldn't be. And I, I agree. There's, there's work to be done with that. And there's some improvements that we can make. Um, but there are times when it is necessary to have the ability to keep those doors propped open for a period of time. Or excuse me, when people have to move, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's an added charge that somebody has to be there to monitor the door and not leave it wide open. So when people are moving in and out, last time that's what we did with security was was there um, to monitor to monitor the situation. Um, but security could be called away at any moment if there is an emergency. Um, but that's something that we can, you know, if we know and we have a scheduled time that we can look at with security to monitor that area a little more closely. I can't guarantee someone's going to be sitting at that door for the entire period of time. But I'm saying you can add a charge to somebody moving in. Oh, add an additional charge to move in? Well, I'm sorry, but it's it's security for us. Mm -hmm. We're just leaving the door wide open and God only knows, do you vet the moving mm -hmm. people? No. Mm -hmm. You're assuming that they're vetted by the company that's moving mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, like I said, we, we can do some more with security on doors being propped open, um, but there, we cannot eliminate the, that entirely. Yes?
Yes. There's one security person for the entire campus on each shift. Yes. I mean, there's always somebody who's on call. I mean, if something would happen, there's some there's somebody who would have to come in and fill in. I mean, there's, a, there's always a cell phone. If they're out by the cottages, that doesn't mean they can't be back here. They wouldn't come back for my problem. No. Well, it depends on if it's an emergency. If it's an emergency, then yes, they should, they should be coming back regardless of where they're at. And they can be reached wherever they are on but a the campus. the police mail says call Bethany police. You can always call 911. I mean, any, your voicemail says call Bethany police. When you try to get security and they don't answer. If they don't answer, if you need 911, yes, absolutely. You can always get a pen. Mm -hmm. How long does it take them to do the whole rounds? I, I'd have to ask security that question. The question was how long does it take them to do rounds? And lots of times they're probably stopped on the way, so I would imagine it varies. Yes. Yeah. So when you leave it to go to church at seven o'clock, there are two security guards. The the evening, the night person is leaving. The day person is coming on. They're changing shift. That's at seven a.m. Right. So at seven a.m., three p.m., and eleven p.m., there's two people for a brief period, but not the entire shift. Yeah. All right. Um, the other last announcement that I had is that we're looking into a system where we can do um, messaging. So we talked about the ability to push, push out messaging to everybody, um, such as, you know, the power's out, estimated restore time is two hours, things like that. Um, it can be done via email or text, um, the system that we're looking at. Nothing's been um, approved or finalized yet but you can push out messages via email or text, and it's using a software system that we already have. It's called Point Click Care, which is actually our electronic medical record that we use for the nursing home and the terrace, but we also use Point Click Care for billing purposes and finance purposes here for IL. So we already have the system in place, um, and this is a capacity that we can use the system for. They're already using it in nursing homes, and that's how they communicated a lot of their COVID updates and would push those out to families. Um, so just be aware, we're still working on that. Um, we recognize that there's a need for it, so we're moving forward. Are we going to have another COVID zone? Uh, I know we've set up a flu clinic. I don't know if the COVID, if there's going to be a COVID booster offered with that clinic. The question was, are we going to have another COVID shot? It's not out yet. They haven't released it. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing new other than the bivalent one that we've had, but sometimes the recommendation is if it's been a certain period of time to get another bivalent booster. I. I, I will check with Sue, but I know that we've booked the flu, and I don't know if there's anything else included with that flu clinic. There is one coming in the fall for the whole country, late fall. Okay. It's in the news. Okay. So it, potentially a new COVID booster. So I, I imagine we would handle it like we did in the past and, um, you know, bring a clinic in if there's a non-resident interest. Yes. <coughs> So RSV um, vaccination is the question. We can look into it. I know that we, um, I was actually just on a pharmacy call with our medical director at the nursing home and they are looking at rolling it out there. Um, they are recommending to wait after individuals get their flu shot to wait a period of time and then get the RSV um, vaccination. Um, but yeah, we're definitely looking into it as a, as a system. Yes. Word. Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. 
So the spectrum, the letter that you got, please disregard that letter. Uh, Corey? <laughs> we don't really have any new news from uh, the last time that we met. We're still waiting on a date because they're, they're insertion gear that they need to order, correct? So um, parts that they still need to order that are on back order on their end. So we are just waiting to get that updated information. Once we have it, we'll let you know as soon as we know. But please look for your original remotes. Continue to do that. Why, yes. Why did they send the letter if they don't, if they didn't meet? Good question. <laughs> so, by the way, the contract is Spectrum is supposed to. We are supposed to notify Spectrum 60 days before any change, which obviously we knew a year ago a little more than a year ago that we would be making this change because it was the only option they were giving us um, and then they are required by fcc regulations to send out a letter saying your service is being canceled however they sent it to all of our communities even the ones that have already made the change so that's causing concern for residents who are now on the new system thinking they're going to cancel the new system which Given the fact that it's Spectrum, they could shut down everybody on September 12th. So I expect to be very busy on September 12th. Yes? On Monday, there was a Spectrum truck uh, down at the end of Hickory, and the guy was wandering around all. Yeah, they're lost souls, they are. <laughs> Did they communicate with you before they come? No. Now, do you know, do you guys know what they're, yeah, we have no idea. So, and it could be, honestly, it could still be a resident calling them trying to get around the system. I keep having, you know, I just want to find a way to be able to keep this or keep that. And so. There were two Spectrum guys in the hall. They were checking insertion gear. Yes. They were here checking the insertion gear in the main building. So. Yes. Any other spectrum questions? <laughs> okay. Joke? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so actually, the, the detention basin, aka the pond, um, we are, we have somebody that's come in, it's actually the person who designed it, um, that is, that we had a contract with in the past, has come in, we're waiting for his proposal to move forward with, with that. So we, again, it's, it's slow moving, but progress. Um, also with the, um, we did talk a little bit about the erosion study that's being done back, um, you know, off the side of the fire road, which was something that the town of Bethlehem had requested that we do when something they noted when the, um, they were doing the new sewer pump. Um, so a little bit of back and forth between the engineer and the town um, as to, you know, what, what the remediation plan is. So we're still waiting on that as well. Yes? I think one of the problems that Spectrum has, and not necessarily their fault, is I think the original lines were laid by AT&T or some other company because it, it Verizon, it, it says it on that. And then we had an incident in our neighborhood where a line died and they had to put a new line in. And so, you know, this, I mean, 30 years ago, they laid lines 25 years ago and a different company's here and so. That sounds right to you. <laughs> well, I mean, I know down at the cottages because of the lightning strike, part of the system got fried and they right. had to replace that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think as things have upgraded, they've been upgrading all along. I don't think it's an issue. Spectrum is the issue with Spectrum. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what happened when that occurred is the guys notified the company that was named on the lines, and maybe it was Verizon, mm -hmm. it was. so fortunately, somebody figured it out and said it should be stopped. 
process we're finding that you know what we're dealing with is bulk service accounts but bulk service accounts doesn't talk to this end of the business who handles the shutoff of the cable and she get a letter saying it's going to be shut off on the 12th so we're finding those departments are not communicating um, with each other I think communication with us we're finding so the the fiber connect division which is the new division we're going to they don't talk to the bulk division so the bulk division has no idea we're being switched. That's why they didn't send the letters in advance that they were supposed to. And then none of them talk to the local stores and the local technicians that come out. So that's why you all can call Spectrum and have someone come out and try to hook up a box again or give you internet because they don't know what their corporate's not telling them. Um, we do, we do have one general St. Peter's Health Partners employee who oversees most of the TV setups for all of our communities, the hospitals, all of that. That's who kind of I report to and work with on that end. Um, and then otherwise, on site, it's me who's dealing with talking to the Spectrum people that are coming. So. <laughs> Do they know not to pick up our boxes? By I was just going to say. So, so when the change happens, if you have a DVR box, again, that you are paying for, or an internet device that you are paying for, it will not be Spectrum that's coming on site when we do the change. It's all of us <laughs> that will be coming to your apartment. So we'll take the boxes when that big change date comes, which we still don't know yet. Um, but on the 12th, like I said, who knows? All of a sudden, yes, services could stop working on the 12th. We just don't know. Oh, well, can't you communicate that? We want to keep it going? Yeah, well, <laughs> no, we're buying radios for everybody. Um, going back to transistors. Um, Yes, I mean, when the letters came out, we contacted and said, look, all of our residents got these letters. This is causing mass confusion. And they're like, we know we're not shutting anything off on the 12th, but who knows if they'll actually relay that. Like I just said, nobody talks to each other out there. Yes. Because they have a monopoly in this area, unfortunately. Corey, you just said maintenance was going to collect all the boxes. You mean... All the boxes that are not DVR boxes. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All the boxes that are property of Beverwick that we pay for currently, we will. If it's a box you pay for, you'll return. 
Can they be returned to UPS yeah. as it says in that letter? Yes. So you can, here's the thing, you can take it to UPS, they'll box it up and send it back for you, or you can take it to a local Spectrum store and return it. Personally, given this whole debacle, I would rather take it back to a Spectrum store and get my receipt that I've returned it and I don't know that I would trust it to the mail. <laughs> or UPS. Huh? And whoever receives it. Right. Go. Right. Yeah. I have a totally different question. What about the telephone? <laughs> I have not been able to use my telephone, my landline telephone, because there's static, terrible static on it. And this has been going on for at least 10 days. We escalated the ticket. Well, yeah. And we, everybody keeps putting a ticket in, but. I still get static. I can't use a phone. Thank goodness I have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll check on your specific um, situation, but we are we are upgrading the phones as well at the same time. Um, so we've been trying to address any hiccups that come up with that as well. Um, the little one-offs, but I'll check on the status of your ticket again. Yes. Will, will my, my phone stop selling people? Trinity Health School. Yes, when we complete the upgrades, it's going to be the caller ID is going to change, correct? Yeah, because right now the caller ID is saying Trinity Health, it will change. Pick up the phone. Yeah. I have to use my phone. Yeah. Yes. I wondered whether we were ever going to be able to use the dump over here for composting our cuttings when we do gardening. No. So the question is uh, where we've been dumping that those things. We're, we will no longer be able to use that, no. That's part of the um, erosion study that the town has said we cannot do anymore. Uh, is there some place else that we could use? We can look at that, but we definitely cannot use that okay. space anymore. Okay. Yes. Yes. That was the same question. Okay. <laughs> well, regarding the phone system, sure. the new phone system, mm -hmm. is there going to be any increased availability of blocking calls because although the number of spam calls that we get or global calls whatever you want to call has decreased somewhat mm -hmm. but I can count on NRCC and presumably another call unavailable which is probably yeah, them also yeah. always coming in at least two a day okay is there going to be enhanced ability to block things uh, I, I don't know. I, I can find out. The question was, will we have any enhanced ability to block calls? I'm not sure, but I can ask. Yes? When you dial 911, do you have to dial 9 and then 911? No, you just dial 911. If you didn't hear that, the question was, you have to dial 9 before dialing 911. The answer is no. 911. Yes? Once in a while, I get a call and the voice asks, is Barry there? And I say, no, and hang up. That's happened well, once in a while, every few weeks. Does anyone else have that kind of call? Uh, we haven't, but I can talk to you specifically about that. Okay. All right. Yes. We need the joke. That's what I was going to do. All right. All right. This one's called the haircut. A teenage boy had just passed his driving test and inquired to his father when they could discuss the use of his car. His father said that he'd make a deal with his son. If you bring your grades up from C's to B's, study your Bible a little bit and get your hair cut, then we'll talk about a car. The boy thought about it for a moment and decided he'd settle for the offer. About six weeks later, his father, son, his father said, son, you brought your grades up and I observed that you've been studying your Bible, but I'm disappointed you haven't had your hair cut then. The boy said, you know, dad, I've been thinking about that. And I've noticed in my studies of the Bible that Samson had long hair, John the Baptist had long hair, Moses had long hair, and there's even strong evidence that Jesus had long hair. And the father replied, did you notice they all walked everywhere they went? <laughs> Thank you guys, have a good afternoon.